Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Jones. So today we're going to do a comparison video between the unique Mantis Q and the Breeze. Both of these can do 4K video unstabilised and both of them can do 1080 stabilised. So the unique Breeze has been out two or three years now. You can pick it up really cheap if you shop around. I've seen these going for as low as 120 quid. New at times on eBay. You can pick up a second hand one certainly with a couple of batteries and the controller for about 150 quid. I reviewed this a couple of weeks ago and I paid 340 with three batteries, the controller of the case, everything that came with it, brand new. So, there's obviously the massive differences are this doesn't fold, this does. This has a dedicated controller and uses 2.4 gigahertz. This doesn't come with a controller, but the pack sometimes comes with this one and a set of air goggles so you can put your phone into it. So this is a GameSir controller and it connects Bluetooth. So you're gonna get a, you're only gonna get a connection between this and your phone, and then this is Bluetooth to your phone. So you're running on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which limits the range severely on this. But this is classed as a selfie drone more than anything else. Uh, I've had this 150 meters and that's the most I've ever had. Normally I stick to around 100 and I seem to be okay at 100 meters. It seems to do okay provided where the area you're in obviously. Whereas this, I've had 800 meters out of it and it didn't seem to have a problem. Didn't lose reception of anything. Obviously the controller on this one is a proper, is a proper 2.4 gigahertz and then it connects using the cable to your phone and uses a Wi-Fi signal for this. It has both, it's a 5G Wi-Fi signal. So they're the major differences. So from a flying point of view, this doesn't fly anywhere near as well as this, as you can imagine, because this is meant for selfie work. However, with this controller, surprisingly, it flies nicely. It's not quick by any stretch of the imagination. It takes a long time to get there and back to where it's going to if you want to get good shots. But it stabilizes its image. Whereas this, if you put it in sports mode, I think it does 40 mile an hour and even not in sports mode, it's very fast, very manoeuvrable, and it's a real joy to fly, it really is a nice thing to fly. But with both of these being a 1080p stabilised drone, you'd think that this one, obviously, is much newer. This one does 60 frames a second, this one does 30. So, you're going to see the footage, because I've obviously filmed um, both of these one after another, so I've flown that, Landed it after three minutes, flown this one for three minutes, landed it. So the, the gap in between is like two or three minutes. It's a grey dull day. It, I'm in the UK, it's always grey and dull in the winter. And the summer normally. So it's a grey dull day, so you're going to see grain in the picture. They're going to have grain. It's 1080p camera drone, you're going to get grain in your picture. However, the breeze, in my opinion, has a better image than that. There's less grain on the breeze, and certainly you're going to see the way it stabilises, it stabilises it better on this. Now, is that because this thing flies a lot slower? And it does. And that could fly that a lot, lot slower, and really feather them sticks. And you might get a, better, a more stable, and that could be the difference on stabilisation. That could truly be the difference. But you'd expect this to be so much better. Photo wise, which I haven't taken on this, this thing kills it. This thing does really nice photos, whereas the photos on this are a bit hit, a bit wishy washy. They're not that great. Mm -hmm. So I expected when I did this comparison to see a massive difference and this be quite a lot better. It was only the other day that I was watching some footage I recorded on this in the summer and the picture was looked superb on it. I thought, that's weird. And I can't compare this because we haven't. I bought this in the winter and it's going to be dull for quite a bit but what I wanted to do was show you the difference because this is for a hundred and odd quid this is a really good drone I reviewed this a long time ago now but it really still is it's held up well and it's held up well because of the fact it's on massive it's nowhere near the cost it was it was ridiculous money when it came out I can't remember what it was four or five hundred pound and never in a million years was it worth that it does have the optical flow sensor underneath and the other crazy thing it has that people don't like is this a glass piece of glass here with, with the sensor underneath and these things break quite often on landing and stuff and you have to buy a new one so I mean they did crazy things with this they made it ugly to say the least and it's far too big for what it is but it flies really nice if you want it as a selfie drone, if you're not, if you're flying 30 and 40 meters out, and that's the most you're ever going to do, and you just want to follow your kids around the park and get some shots, 
every bit as good as this. Every bit as good this is as that. If you want to do some more flying, you want to go a distance, then obviously it's this one. But for the price of this one, it's hard to recommend. Whereas at this, I'd recommend this all day long, what you can pick it up for. I think even you, I've seen them on They're only a couple of hundred quid if you buy them from the, the um, retailer stores. But you can certainly shop around and get good deals on, on one of these. And for the money, yeah, definitely. So enjoy the video that's coming up. You'll see the difference in shots. I'll put some side-by-side -side footage on some standalone so you can see it on the full-size screen and on the smaller screen of how good they look. And you make your own opinion up. Thanks ever so much. Have a great day.